Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on tips and tricks for Terra Tech. Now, in the last episode, we talked about this little guy, these AI drones, which can be used to protect you and are pretty basic. But this episode, we are talking about hovercraft and harvesters. Now, if we think about hovercraft, you can basically have hovercraft do whatever you want. They're easy to run, they can move around easy, great terrain. On the other hand, they like to, um, let's just go over here. It basically drifts in and back, back and forth, as you see in that hovercraft. Without, when the hover, when I hovercraft over there, it's just normal. It's, um, normal anyway. And when it's really just a cab instead of an AI cab, it's, well, a lot more stable for some reason. It doesn't just switch around stability. Now I added the four Avalanche missile launchers from the Venture. That's the Venture um, class, I think it's called. So as you see, that was turn turn a lot and not overall that good. Now this design I made is both of them, so you can drive it and all that stuff. It's a bigger version of this one over here. So cannons. And basically I'm supposed to be it as a mobile base. Now it's basically the exact almost a pretty much the same thing. As that one's just bigger. So we have a follow us. It takes a little bit of turn. And so you probably, the main reason to want AI and hovercraft, you probably just want it to um, not drift around a lot. But then it's all hovercraft basically would drift a lot probably. Now, easily to um, fix the uh, drifting over terrain is the hover power. That way when you go over terrain, let's just go over this tech also. It will just go right over it, and it won't make that much of a big deal about it. But, sadly, that's literally it. It has missiles and some cannons on it, but... Again, hovercraft is not that good, except if you want to do missiles. I recommend doing missiles on all hovercraft with AI modules inside. Because... As you see, it's circling those enemy techs. So, yeah. Circling enemy techs all around it. So, I recommend doing missile launchers. Make the easiest. Now, for, for the next part, we're talking about harvesters. In the past, in the past, the AI in the game, all AI modules basically means it could, um, how do I say this? AI used to be able to do specific tasks, like following and protecting your tech, or harvesting and stuff. Now, sadly, only way, sadly, there's no way to replicate that. Besides, in some, these drills. These drill when AI usually gets stuck on something, you know, your AI would probably would do suck get stuck on anything. And basically what it would do is um or let's just go behind something. You see the robot's following me pretty well with the tracks like in it. And let's just go behind this thing. If we get directly behind it, the drone will probably get stuck. If it hits it. As you see it's mining away. So to get to your tech. And this thing has basically. A normal Gruntal AI module from GSGO. Sorry not GSGO. GSO sorry. So. The main. You probably want at least this guy in. You want to have. Drills on the front of your tech. Of any tech that's going to be protecting or following you. That way, they can get through objects. If we were to um, fly over here, quick. 
I'm going to fly over here. No the enemy shooting at me. <laughs> the enemy is just trying to drill, but if you had actual guns on that thing, it would be very good. Let's just go over here for now. And you see that robot's still trying to follow me. And so that way, enemy also. And the reason why it's not mining right now is because it's being attacked. B. It's just gonna be like that forever. But next, let's talk about the um, G Corp stuff. Huh. Ooh, that's actually. I never seen a tech like this. I actually might be a really good design for an um, AI tech right there. But right now, let's just um, have it go away. You see, the AI eventually followed me. I was just gonna do it anyways. So let's just have that and stop. And watch a satisfying thing of missiles. <laughs> there we go. Now the base, the base designs for all of these um, G Corp designs I'm about to show you are just made with this. Tons of batteries, and this simple thing is pretty easy to drive, and has its own AI module right here. Decently fast. Pretty good. Now I turn that into um, a charging base. Use a ton of blocks and all that stuff. You can anchor it to charge yourself and all that stuff. Gyroscope so it doesn't flip over. And some all stuff you probably don't need on it. But the issue with this design is it probably can't get through objects. Easy way to do that, probably. It's just drills. From any anything. Because this thing is basically a mobile charging base. So it'll try to get through stuff. So that way it's pretty slow. So. Let's just see if we can increase the speed real quick. Where is it? There we go. Oh, not that area. Hmm. There we go. Now we got two of these on there, hopefully. If it actually. There we go. And see, that thing just broke it by hitting it. We do not want that. So that means usually you want them to be higher than this to go over trees, rocks, and all that stuff. Right now, this is a base design for a charging base you might want to do. I recommend like raising this a little bit. I didn't really spend that much time on this, so I'll just make it armored and protected. Not made to go through stuff though, sadly. The next design, on the other hand, is made for drilling. It has charging on it. It can also like an anchor at its mobile base. Now, the main way to turn this into a driller is go to G Corp. Then G Corp or um, GSO are mostly the best ones to use for mining. Or at least anything. So we add two of those. You see, it will drill. Let's go into the better future and get. Uh, where is it? Claw plasma, plasma cutter. With this design right here, I can easily cut through stuff now. But if the design is not that good. So the reason why the design is not that good is because this stuff right here, the tread, everything that's not in line with this, like there's a chance this um, light bore thing might cover the tracks because when it's going through stuff that uh, tracks will get caught and stuff and it's not, it basically slows it down and it basically cannot do that much. Which is sadly the opposite of what we want. So I recommend. What? 
Okay, I just noticed these um bullet things are not straight, but that's an annoying later. And the best thing you know, I pre I'm pretty sure I found is this. It's not that good, but it does help. Or you do this this one. In the it won't help that much, it's teeny tiny it's not gonna help. Is the main one to use is this. The reason I want these on here because any object that gets close to there, it will get stuck. It will easily be able to get out. So let's just drive it over here. Let's get there with better. As you see right now, this design's pretty good at coming. Let's just see how well it does. You see it's easily mining through and it'll easily be able to defend against normal attacks. But since it's no long range weapons, it's not that good at defending itself. So I'm sorry G Corp has no long range. So I recommend using uh, if you want something really cheap, go to GSO. I'm pretty sure you can do this. <laughs> just add Big Bird for can onto it. But I don't recommend doing that. That was your speed. And it's just not that good. We huh? can add these missile batteries from GSL. So that way, uh, can someone at long range, it's close range weapons also. So, yeah. Now that design right there can't pick up stuff, but you can control it, because it's is basically that, but you can see it can charge itself and has tons of batteries to well, protect itself if needed. Now let's go to battery, let's go to um, shield. I would recommend using Hawkeye, the reason for that is it's huge. It covers the front weapons in just one. But if you can, if you want to, you can. I can put some right there also. That protects a giant range and has a giant battery power to protect it. I don't recommend using the Hawkeye repair bubble. Just use the normal one because um, it's basically eh, well actually yeah. Don't use the GS ones. They're pretty bad. So yeah, I just recommend using uh, these. As you see, it looks very nice. Okay. If it actually goes there. That way, now this Titan is protected now. Even more so. Probably don't need two there, but we're adding it just for looks. Now, see that one shield, has this thing is completely covered in, in protection. No? So it's good. And missile batteries to protect itself, tons of shields. I was thinking about collecting. And the best collecting is probably the same GS Corp. Wait, sorry, not GS Corp. Geo Corp, sorry. But right now, I recommend using um. You know, it depends on how much you want resources for once you get. I recommend doing like this in the front. Don't know how well it will work, but I know that will do well. Now, in case you run over something that's not that good, place about two there. Let's we'll place another one right there, just so it picks up everything on both sides. And that looks about even right there. Now, for the middle, is big. So in the big little stuff. For example, we're just gonna fill this higher thing up with this. But you could get some. I'm pretty. Sh I know for a fact you can get some. Oops, I don't want to that. Let's just go over here, quick. I know we can add some conveyors to get some more storage on this. Now what? Uh, it's from GS Corp. I'm pretty sure. That way, 
it will um let you pick up more stuff for one and just be overall good overall good so let's just continue building this up real quick and this was a down conveyor now this is very easy to build and it's very good now you don't have to do this conveyor stuff or you don't have to but you can have a ton more storage this way and uh, you also can put it down there on the sides if you want doesn't really matter but, but this now is protected ish but that one's not but in reverse this that way any resource that picks up from these two big collectors it will be brought down to these two systems and that allows you to hold a lot more now you can if you want you can add the uh, where is it? You have thimble collectors from there also. Use them to add more space and collecting range. If you want. We don't have to. But you can. Now let's just have this thing set to follow. Now that's basically a basic harvester base. And it's pretty good. Now we think about this robot right here. Drills. Now that's actually pretty good. And you right there. So that way, this um. Oh, it's gone. Let's just get out of that real quick. And yeah, don't place that in there. Because when this thing tries to get through stuff. Let's just um. Hmm. Let's go over here. Because it's a good rock formation. Now we now start following us. Now let's just stop right here. Again, this drone is on Steam, so you want to use it, you can. The base Geocorp base that I built the collector and the charging base will also be on Steam. Let's just try to get it to us. Let's just see these, um... What are they? The windmill for a guard. That's helping to get through stuff. Now, if we don't want it... As you see right here, it's not really protecting these collectors. I'm pretty sure it still has the range to do that. But just get rid of them if you feel like it's not going to work. And that is a basic driller base. Now you can even, if you want, add a refinery and make this thing. Like a mobile cash thing if you want. But you don't have to. You really just don't even have to if you want to if you don't want to. So I'll just get over here. I'll just get all, of that, all the way back to our testing range. Start flying, make it easier. Now on to the third and final phase. And that is the attack. Now you probably want at least one drill in your fleet. Where is it? First of all, where is it? Oh, it's over there. So that way, if you go too far, this thing will, this thing will lose range. See, it's attacking the enemy because it went too far, it didn't update it. Now, sadly, at close range, of things not that good. That's why I mean, all the wagers, all that stuff is helpful. Because there's two enemies here, you can't decide which one to attack first. So let's just help out a little bit. Let's just a little bit hurt real quick. You guys remember, remember this is one of my drone, two of my turrets that don't have the GSO bottom. Also, the reason why you want to have a charging base, if you look at the AI, 
it continues as it tries to run you over, or it tries to get right where your cap is. So that basically means, um, you probably want it to have, you probably want to have a big tech so they don't run you over. Let's just get this stuff real quick. Now both, now this charging station and that drill or base, both have shields, so we just turn them on. Now let's just turn the shields on real quick. As you see, the shields are coming online, and still there. This thing also is protected, and can probably protect anything beneath it. Now let's go on to a third and final base product. This is the attack one. Even though you have some dramatic music, let's get away from that. Now this thing can in fact charge itself also, if needed. Right now, I recommend doing almost the same design on that harvester base, just so we can get th through. You don't need scoop claws or anything like that. You just need the windmill flail guard. There. These also, just so that we can get through stuff pretty easily. And now we have a tech that can easily trans go over all terrain. Well, almost all terrain. Probably can't go over mountains, but we have to go over all terrain. Huge battery supply, so it's mega protected. And we can. If you didn't have these flower guards here, which if you don't want them, you could add one of these big Bertha cannons. In fact, you probably can add two if you're really good at. Nah, wait, so you can't. But you can. Have one of these and is still able to drill through stuff pretty easily. But I recommend using the fail guards. Just so you can get through more stuff. Now, okay. Let's think about cannons. Hmm. This, cannons don't like to be underneath the fail guards, so we're just gonna use missile batteries at first. At least I recommend doing that. Just so you can hit the enemies and let boost a megaton cannon in front. So that way, pretty big range of attack, you can go through stuff, and it's decently quick. Now let's think about more weapons you can add to the way. If you want, you can add one some you can add some missile pods here. Just to make it a little bit more deadly, but you don't have to. Keep in mind, I'm literally trying to go with a cheap, yet but durable, just build. Durable and cheap build currently. Now, I recommend using these mortar, the monster mortars from Hawkeye. If it actually. There we go. The reason why I suggest this is because. It's facing one direction and has a decent amount of range. In fact, the nice thing about at the cruise missiles is the fact that you can, um, um, they go up and over. Now, this design as it is incredibly dangerous, but has no shields. So let's work on that. As you guys can see, we have two Hawkeye shields right there. And we have two more right there. This is enough protection to last you forever. But you have a ton of space right here. You can add more missiles if you wanted to, mortars, anything really if you want. So let's just get our repair bowls on there. There and there, probably be nice. There we go. Now let's instead of one shield the big enough range to cover mostly everything but let's add another one here so we get so to make sure it's pretty good and this thing is pretty protected your missiles can go through anything and it's probably the perfect missile battery if you wanted to now let's think of venture 
If you wanted to, you can get rid of some of the blocks and add more of these missiles, but you don't have to. Let's just go to this. And, well, you don't really have to, but I recommend just doing the mortars. You can do mortars all you want here. So you get a ton of more power. You can add a ton of mortars right there if you wanted to. If I have actually placed straight, there we go. Tons of mortars to get a little bit more power. We'll probably hit these, so probably not a good idea with mortars, but they're in the first three rows. Now, or you can do collectors. You can do collectors to collect anything, really. Anything this thing goes through. Now, this is as good design as it is. It's very protected. Oh, let's just face an enemy real quick. If we find one. Besides that one right there. Let's go over here. Let's just go over here. Let's hopefully the guns will actually turn to it. Now, these things were attacking me, and if I didn't have any vulnerable things, I could easily just get through this. So let's just see how much damage this thing does. Destroyed. Everything's really destroyed usually. Now, you can put these cruise missiles on another layer if you wanted to. In fact, you can even have a mobile SCU system on this. But, we're just going to leave it as it is. We're just going to leave it as it is, and finish it off here. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe so I know to do more. And, as you guys can see, the power I'm seeing is insane. We haven't got that on at all. So... If you guys would please leave tips and tricks I should probably feature or should know about, I will probably do them next. And, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next trick video.